Richten. Good. That means that it is now clearer what processes we're talking about. So in the places of the highest concentration and activity of the forces of a lot, on the surface of that initial spherical state of the universe, matter started to accumulate in certain formations. The latter became the progenitors of future galaxies in which life originated. Different legends describe this in images of the appearance of the enormous first person of giants, the progenitors who formed the universe with their bodies and who subsequently, after death, were separated into parts and gave birth to other formations. By the way, within those initial accumulations, there appeared hotbeds of thermal radiation, which have remained within the microwave range even now. They are currently known by science as the cosmic microwave background radiation, the relic radiation. This is precisely the manifestation of the first effect of the forces of a lot during the creation of the material world. In fact, it should be noted that it is thanks to a lot that matter started to become endowed with life and the ordering of all that exists began. And here is another very important aspect of the formation of the universe, which gives an understanding of what the universe represents now, the drive of the force of a lot for the unified ordered form towards God set the motion of the universe from the inside to the outside and started spinning it in the right spiral, i.e. towards expansion. This is how the function to creation was set. People from the upper Paleolithic times symbolically depicted this movement from the inside to the outside as the correct swastika, the straight, right swastika. In other words, as a cross with edges bent to the left. Such a swastika symbolizes the clockwise movement in the right direction. By the way, translated from Sanskrit, the old Indian word swastika comes from the word su, means associated with good, i.e. suasti, means the beautiful exists, good existence. Simultaneously, while spinning the universe in the correct spiral, the force of a lot gave birth to the opposing force, which started spinning in a reverse spiral inside the universe, in the direction which was opposite to the main direction of a lot, from the outside to the inside, bringing matter together into a unified material mind, the animal mind. Thus, the destroying function was set, an opposition to the forces of a lot. Peoples symbolically depicted this motion from the outside to the inside as the incorrect, aggressive, reverse swastika, i.e. as a cross with edges bent to the right. Such a swastika symbolizes the counterclockwise movement in the left direction. In mythology, the emergence of the opposing force is reflected in the image of the emergence of fire out of water. Anastasia Regarding the understanding of spins of the two swastikas, the following clarification you gave previously helped me. If in a cup of tea you spin a vortex, a funnel, clockwise with a spoon, it is possible to see waves of the correct swastika form along the edges, and if you spin this liquid counterclockwise, waves of the reverse swastika will be observed. Rigdon. Correct. This is the clearest example which a person encounters on a daily basis. So this is how there appear two directly opposite forces in the universe, the greater force spinning the universe outwards and the smaller force which opposes it within the universe itself. After these two forces had manifested themselves, the universe lost its spherical shape and flattened under their influence, that is, it compressed, became flatter. This point is recorded in the cosmic legends of peoples of the world as the cracking of the world egg splitting it into two halves, out of which heaven and earth were created, and divisions, spaces, and waters were placed between them. Other legends say that the components which remained after the egg had cracked expanded and turned into the universe. Still other episodes mention the division of the world into two elements, or two deities, with directly opposite functions, the creation of an invisible pair. The spirals themselves are represented in myths as, for example, the first pair of gods with the opposite functions, one having the divine essence and the other one having a demonic one, from whom the other gods later descended. 
In another version of the legend, they were depicted as half humans and half snakes. At that, the creating ones, being the water deities, had bodies of distinctive green color. In the third version, there were characters that embodied order, life waters, fertility, and light. The opposite ones personified disorder, death, darkness, and unpaired creature. For instance, according to African myths, the jackal who desired to become the master of the universe. So this is how the creation of the universe was reflected in myths. It is just that modern people have lost the understanding of the spiritual side of the subject, and everything has been reduced to the level of the material perception of ancient stories. Anastasia So this means that now the universe is expanding in a spiral due to the motion of a lot, correct? Rigdon Yes, and on every subsequent larger turn, its speed increases, while the time of passing the turns remains the same. So the overall motion of matter in the universe, including the overall movement of galaxies, occurs in a spiral. Anastasia This is really important information, and it opens a view of the world from a completely different perspective. Rigdon By the way, the word spiral originated from the Latin word spira, which means a curl, a curve, a bend of the snake. This last name came from the east, where the snake was considered to be a sacred animal and where many things related to the invisible processes of the world were explained to the people back then in the clear examples of the visible world. For instance, the spiral movement was explained through the visual example of the coiling of the snake. In spiritual practices, many things are also connected with the spiral movement of energy. For instance, in the East, in ancient India, the hidden tremendous potential power of man is symbolized by the kundalini energy, the repository of which is located at the base of the spine. Since ancient times, this energy was depicted as a symbol of a sleeping serpent, coiled in a spiral three and a half times. By the way, the word kundalini is translated from Sanskrit as a power coiled in a spiral, coiled in the form of a snake. The awakening of the dormant kundalini serpent and its activation are considered to be one of the highest achievements in spiritual practices. But in fact, as you already know, it is only another stage in the spiritual development, just another step, no more than that. I should mention that in the myths of various peoples of the world, the symbol of the snake has been associated with fertility, with the feminine creating power, with earth, air, water, fire, especially heavenly fire, as well as with wisdom. Now compare this with the information you already know, for example about cell division, the motion of the electron, air cyclones, anticyclones, and whirlpools, or with the function of spiral structures, for example DNA, which is connected to the long-term storage and transfer of information. There you have a symbol of wisdom. Yet, this is only a small part of what is known today. There is a lot of knowledge, for instance, about the Earth, outer space, and galaxies, which people have so far associated with primitive mythology, because modern science has not yet perceived the phenomena described in it in the language of associations. I wouldn't say that this knowledge has been preserved in myths in its initial form, but it can still be understood even with the existing touches of human fantasy if one knows the essence of global physical processes. Anastasia, if possible, please give an example of such knowledge. Rigdon, all right, let's take, for instance, the cosmogonic myths of Europe, Asia, Africa, or America. Many of them are connected with the image of the coiled serpent. Specifically, if you get to the core of at least the legends of ancient India with which you're familiar, for example, with regard to the world thousand-headed or seven-headed in other interpretations, serpent Shesha, you can understand a lot. After all, according to the ancient legends, he not only supports the earth, but thanks to his countless coils, also serves as a bed for god Vishnu. Furthermore, the legends describe that with his countless mouths, he is constantly busy chanting the glory and the name of god Vishnu. Anastasia Yes, Vishnu is one of the highest gods in the Hindu mythology. Brahma, Shiva, and Vishnu make up the divine triad, the Trimurti. 
that is three forms in Sanskrit. The name of Vishnu in the Indian tradition is interpreted as all-embracing and penetrating everything as the universal revitalizing principle. Rigdon. That's right. According to this legend, it is believed that at the end of every world cycle, the serpent Shesha spits out the poisonous fire which destroys the universe. Then Vishnu falls asleep, resting on that serpent which floats in the world causal ocean. When God Vishnu awakens, he contemplates a new creation while reclining on the coils of the serpent Shesha. Then a lotus grows out of Vishnu's navel. From the lotus, Brahma, who creates the universe, manifests himself. And a new world cycle comes. Interestingly, the permanent epithet of the serpent Shesha is Ananta, meaning infinite. Anastasia, the serpent personifying infinity. Ananta is a symbol of infinity. I wonder what if we assume that the serpent's coils mean the spiral movement of energy. Rigdon, smiling. I will say even more. In some myths, the serpent Shesha is seen as an illusion of Vishnu, whereas in others, as a part of Vishnu. Just read more down-to-earth myths, such as, for example, the one about the Egyptian serpent Mahanta that surrounds the earth, or about the Scandinavian Midgard serpent Jormungand, who, according to the legends, lives in the ocean and encircles the whole earth. Or take the mythology of the West African peoples, for example, of the Dogon. They mention that the earth is surrounded, like a rim, by space with salty water. All this is entwined by an enormous snake biting its tail. In the center of the earth, there is an iron pillar, and the earth's disk revolves around its iron axis during the day. Or take a look at the myths of the Indians of the central part of South America, according to which there were times when the sky fell down to the earth and only the serpent who coiled around the sky and the earth was able to separate them. It is believed that he still keeps them separated. Anastasia In other words, it may well be some kind of a force field with a spiral structure which keeps the two environments in balance. Rigdon, smiling. And the Indians of the Amazon basin have preserved a myth that the Boyusu snake presents itself to the world in the daytime in the form of a rainbow, as the master of rain who drinks the heavenly water, whereas at night it manifests itself as a black hole in the Milky Way. Anastasia. A black hole? Amazing! Rigdon. The knowledge exists, but in order to understand it, one needs a qualitatively different perception of the world. So getting back to our conversation about outer space. The black hole is a unique phenomenon in this world. It pulls matter to itself and destroys it while pushing away and thus preserving the information that forms matter. And this is what clever people should think about, for the understanding of this process will give a true answer to the question about the creation of the universe and not only to it. This answer will totally change the distorted human idea about phenomena of the macrocosm and the microcosm. It will then become clear why information never disappears anywhere and why, when pushed away by the black hole, it is concentrated in certain areas of the universe. What makes these information building blocks form ordered shapes and create matter out of nothing? Why do molecular clouds appear in the expanse of the universe as if from nowhere? And how is the electromagnetic field formed inside such clouds? What makes molecules unite in macro objects, for instance in gigantic stars? And finally, what gives birth to life, and not only life, but at times to intelligent life? At first sight, these questions seem to be difficult. However, if an inquisitive human mind compares all the previous knowledge given in your books with what I've just said, and uses the foam plastic building blocks of his brain a little, many things can change, at least in people's lives. On the other hand, I haven't said anything new. All of this was once known to mankind. Anastasia So people knew about the existence of information which creates matter. Rigdon Partly. For instance, in ancient Egypt, this knowledge was inscribed on golden tablets as a heritage for descendants. Later on, people called such heritage the Books of Thoth. Though the tablets were eventually destroyed, 
or more exactly melted, because most people have always valued gold more than knowledge. Nevertheless, copies of the tablets reinscribed on papyrus sheets, or at least a part of them, have been preserved. Unfortunately, such copies have been frantically destroyed by priests at different times, no matter where they were found, for the information contained in them literally undermined the power of priests over people. Nevertheless, something remained, and this something, having been saved and rehidden in the Croatian mountains, gave the world two eminent scientists in the second half of the 19th century. But when that something fell into the wrong hands in 1936, it caused irreversible consequences, the beginning of which was later witnessed by peaceful inhabitants of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Anastasia. Yes, the proverbial human choice. Rigdon. So on the whole, although such information is important for the future, it will provoke the greatest outrage, let's put it this way, of contemporary priests from science. Anastasia. Priests from science? Rigdon. Yes, I mean those whose aspirations are directed not towards the advancement of science, but rather towards keeping crowns on their heads, and who believe that their opinion in science is unshakable. Certainly in public, they will simply fly into a rage while trying to lynch this knowledge, and laughing foolishly at the truth will hide their fear of it. Anastasia Still, there are real scientists in the world who yearn to know the truth for the sake of the truth itself, whose consciousness is not blinded by such opinions of authorities. Rigdon. Undoubtedly, this knowledge will eventually find those who are indeed the real scientists. People will begin to verify this information, compare it, and in the end they will reach the truth. An inquisitive mind, seeing the direction and the already available knowledge, can discover on its own everything that I have deliberately left unsaid, thus opening its own way to knowing the truth. As for authorities, no authorities can exist in real science. Real science is the process of knowing the truth and not a means of attaining power. Once this information about the black hole and about the heaviest micro-objects in our material universe gets confirmed, this can be done even with modern equipment, these discoveries will not only give answers to the numerous unresolved questions of modern science, beginning with the origin of the universe and ending with transformation of particles in the microcosm, it will radically change the entire understanding of the structure of the world, including everything from micro to macro objects and the phenomena which they constitute. This will confirm the primary nature of information, of the spiritual component. Everything is information. Matter does not exist as such. It is secondary. What is primary? Information. The comprehension of this will change a lot. It will give rise to new trends in science. But the main thing is that people will answer the question of the real structure of the human being. After all, the knowledge about the human essence and the general energy structure, which is different from the physical body, is still being kept secret. Such an understanding, in its turn, will radically change the world view of many people from the material to the spiritual one. Anastasia Yes, this can indeed change the course of the human civilization towards true spiritual development. Rigdon, smiling. If only people could hear you. Anastasia. I'd like to believe that people will indeed hear this. After all, this knowledge is so unique. Rigdon. This knowledge is unique for a person only when he already understands much beyond the patterns of the material world and when his soul aspires to go beyond the horizon of events. But so many people, so many times, the knowledge has been given at different times. People tend to lose it with time. And why? because the human mind complicates the simple so much that it becomes unable to see the truth anymore. There is, as it happens, one ancient Indian parable in this regard. It dates back to the time when women not only had equal rights with men, but their spiritual wisdom was highly respected. Once upon a time, there lived a woman, a mistress named Virya. Translated from Sanskrit, this name means knowledge. She had a disciple whose name was Amrit, immortal. When the disciple had grown up, 
Mistress Vidya told him, You have grown up. Now you can control your thoughts and emotions and subdue your anger. Go now and see the world. You are ready to find and know the single seed of the truth. Amrit asked, Mistress Vidya, I am grateful to you for your wise words and good deeds. They have taught me a lot. But give me at least a hint where to look for the single seed of truth. Mistress Vidya only smiled and replied, Listen to your soul. It will lead you in the right direction. No sooner had Amrit reached the big city than he heard the news that the emperor of the land was holding a great council of sages to discuss the meaning of human life. The winner would be awarded a great prize, 100 cows with their horns adorned with gold. Amrit went to the council, hoping to get an answer to his question of where to find the single seed of the truth. But something unexpected happened. When the sages were asked what is the meaning of life, each of them answered in their own way. One woman among the sages said, This world for people is nothing more than a temporary abode. Man is born with clenched fists, trying to conquer it, but he dies with open palms, not taking a single speck of dust from the world. The meaning of life is in the birth of man's desires which form his fate in the afterlife. A man from the sages continued the discussion. Man's desires are innumerable like sea sands, but his deeds are rare like granite stones. Man's deeds make up his life, his ill or good deeds become his ill or good fortune. The meaning of human life is made up of what he does each time, here and now. Another woman from the sages replied to him, Deeds are merely consequences of a person's thoughts. If a person acts with evil thoughts, suffering follows him like a cart's wheel follows ox's legs. If a person acts with good thoughts, joy follows him like a shade from the bright sun. The meaning of person's life lies in his thoughts. So the discussion continued until noon. Finally, one of the well-known gurus of that time, famous at the court for his learning, said, Thoughts burst from emotions like fire erupts from lightning. The man of yesterday is different from the one tomorrow. To be able to learn from life means to live twice. The meaning of life is in the changes that come from toil and worries. Silence followed these words. When none of the other sages replied, Amrit, who was standing among the ordinary people, decided to take part in the discussion and said, Human life passes like a dream. In order to understand its meaning, it is necessary to wake up. Changes on the outside do good only if they come from the inner world of a person. All that exists and that doesn't exist in this world is here, in the human soul. Knowing this truth is the meaning of life. Common people rejoiced after these words, and the sages nodded approvingly, agreeing with the wisdom that came from this unknown young man. The emperor's prize was given to Amrit, and so in just one day, he suddenly became rich and famous. After the council, Amrit was approached by the well-known guru who until that point had gotten the better of all his opponents in a debate, and from whom this young man had so unexpectedly taken away the victory. He asked Amrit why he had come to this land, and having found out about Amrit's search for the single seed of the truth, he rejoiced. Oh, young man, you are unspeakably lucky. Today, you have gained not only riches and fame, but also a true friend and a wise teacher. Myself, I am well known in this land. I teach different sciences in which many seeds of the truth are hidden. After this conversation with the famous guru, Amrit decided to become his student and spent all his money on learning worldly sciences from him. Soon, he became one of his best students, having mastered many languages and learned all the sciences of that time. Full of pride for his achievements, Amrit came back to the house of wisdom. Mistress Vidya was in the garden. 
Delighted to see her, Amrit began telling her about his travels. When I had left the House of Wisdom, something unexpected happened. On that day, the emperor of the country held a great council of sages. I went there, hoping to get an answer to my question. The meaning of human life was discussed at the council. I voiced my opinion and suddenly received the emperor's prize. In just one day, I became rich and famous. In order to know the single seed of truth, I decided to spend all the money on lessons from a famous guru. Now, I have acquired great knowledge in many sciences and can tell you about many seeds of truth in each of them. So Amrit began recounting what he had learned. However, Mistress Vidya, having listened to Amrit's story about his achievements and the knowledge he gained, only smiled and said, You have shown your learning. All that you have learned in the world is knowledge from the mind. It does not mean that you have found and learned the single seed of the truth. Multitude is born out of the whole. In order to penetrate the essence of the sacred, you need the ability to feel as well as awareness and understanding. Mistress Vidya picked up from the ground a fruit from the nearest tree and showed it to Amrit. You have studied what the material world is woven from, but you missed what it is created of and the reason why it all exists. Mistress Vidya divided the fruit in half. Having taken out the seed, she divided it in half also, showing the pulp within the seed to Amrit. With your mind, you have known the visible core of the seed from which a big tree grows, but only through the ability to feel can you know the invisible, that life-giving emptiness from which a big tree grows. The seed is just a vessel for this creating emptiness. The life-giving emptiness is woven from the single seed of the truth from which everything was born and into which everything will dissolve again. When you set out on the path, you already possessed this knowledge. Thanks to it, you gained riches and fame. But you use the riches for the mind, while riches are given to understand responsibility. The riches of this world belong to this world in which everything is transient and is subject to death. Had you used the riches for the benefit of people, you would have found and known the single seat of the truth, a part of which exists in you too. But what should I do now? Amrit murmured nervously. I don't have the riches anymore to amend my mistake. To which Mistress Vidya replied, Continue your way from the point where you stopped. Continue your way building on the experience which you already have. You have acquired worldly knowledge which people value and thus perceive the visible world. Go and teach people this knowledge and show them not only what the visible world is woven from, but also show them what it consists of and why it all exists. Amrit was surprised. How will I show people what I do not know myself? Mistress Vidya smiled. Become the one you don't know. Become yourself, for you have a part of the single seed of the truth in you. Human is just a vessel for the soul, the source of his essence. Find that one and perceive it. This is the most important thing. Once you perceive the single seed of the truth, you will know yourself. Amrit asked, But how do I do this? Mistress Vidya replied, Use your mind for the benefit of people and gain experience. When your deeds coming from feelings for the sake of the truth, outnumber words said for the sake of the ego coming from your mind, then you will perceive the single seed of the truth. Anastasia this is an interesting parable and relevant at all times.